Rossi Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to another episode of Packcast, the podcast where you don't have to be Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom Grassi, and here we are again from legendary Lambeau Field, and I am joined by the one, the only, president and CEO of the Green Bay Packers, Mr. Mark Murphy. Mark, you're seven that we've done this. You're eight, I think, actually, if we're going like specific. I appreciate you having me. I appreciate you being on. No, it's uh, it's my pleasure, and uh, I know our fans and fans enjoy it. Yeah, yes, they do. They yeah. they definitely get a kick out of it every year. <laughs> um, I like. I want to jump right in because literally from seven years ago to mm-hmm. today, every single time that I've talked with you, mm-hmm. there's been one thing that's always come up, and it's trying to get the NFL draft. Yeah. We talked about extensively last mm-hmm. year about how we were in the running. We were in the finals. We were going to get it. Yeah. And then they gave it to Detroit. Uh, and, so there, you tell me there's a chance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was just like, we were we were this close. Yeah. And I know we were talking about it. Like we had a Notre Dame coming, like game like that was going to be happening. Yeah. And there's like a scheduling. And then, first of all, congratulations because yeah. we got it. Like we fight. What were just the initial emotions like when you knew it was finally locked in? Because I have to imagine like there's is of course mm-hmm. excitement. Like, is there like a well, little a, relief? A little relief, yeah. I was going to say it's excitement and relief. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so many different people were involved, and particularly Gabrielle Dell, she's uh, kind of taking the lead for us on it. Um, but yeah, it was really since 2016. Uh, well, 2015, they it was the first time they took it on the road to Chicago, and then in 16, we decided to say, hey, what about Green Bay? And yeah, I have to admit, there were some times where I wondered, you know, is this going to happen? Yeah. yeah. But give credit to the league. I mean, this is going to be, it'll be a different, certainly quite a bit different than draft in Chicago or Nashville. Um, but, you know, I think what really, the history and tradition of Lambeau Field is, you know, unmatched. Um, and I think Town really helps now having that. And then the Rush Expo and the Rush Center. Um, so the this, the whole can everything's going to be utilized for the draft. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know there was even talks about like ferry boats. Like they were talking. Like we're they're just like we're just we're having conversations, right? Yeah. We're just having those. Con- Roger Goodell was here this past Monday, yes. yeah. right? And besides, of course, like the relief of like, okay, like we did it, yeah. right? There's also now it's like oh man, now it's planning yeah, time, there's, right? There's like a lot of work to do. Yeah, and like the excitement that came from Packers fans, like. Can you just explain for people who just don't know, like what this means for this city? Because it's not just like Kansas City is hosting the draft or Detroit's hosting the draft, which is great, right? It's mm-hmm. going to do great for them, but it's different because it is Green Bay and it is smaller than a lot of the places where the relative about. impact. Is, yeah, it's, there's nothing close to it. Same thing with our home home weekends. I mean, it means so much more here than anywhere else. But yeah, the, to put it in perspective, uh, we anticipate there'll be about 240,000 people that will travel here for the draft. And Green Bay's population is... <laughs> so, yeah. It's gonna be, so, uh, and then the economic impact across the states, like 94 million. And put that in perspective, economic impact of a single game is like 15 million. So yeah. it's, you know, five or six. It's like having five or six games in a week <laughs> and like even though you know goodell comes in and you know maybe slips that you know green bay will host a super bowl like that that's this is our super bowl in yeah. terms of hosting right like this is such a big deal and there's hotels that are going up and of course you mentioned title sure. town yeah for people who have never been to green bay wisconsin because there's gonna be a lot of people who have coming here for the very first time to come for the draft what kind of things do you think are going to stand out about this place particularly that yeah. people are going to be like oh like it's different here well, I think Lambeau Field, uh, yeah. the first thing. Um, I mean, it's not only the his- history and the tradition of it, but, you know, I think people would be surprised that it's it's really used year-round, with, you know, with the restaurant and the Hall of Fame and uh, everything that we have here. Um, I think Town people will be uh, pleased to see, you know, the, the, the impact that that's had. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, you know, uh, well, it's an interesting story. Um Late April can be, uh, weather-wise, can be very... Uh, Unpredictable, up, potentially. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody from the league office is praying for snow. They, they think snow would be okay. great for TV. I mean, you're not, not wrong. Not so much for people. <laughs> no, not so much for the crowds. But, like, they're still going to be out there. The crowds are still yeah. going to be out there. But yeah. if you had, like, a wintry, just, like, falling in Lambeau nice, Field. is like light snow. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, I'll take that. I mean, they were worried about it with the Super Bowl when that was in New York, but here it's just like, nope, that's fine. Like, we'll, we'll get the ambiance going. Yeah. And besides, obviously, the draft, which was so big, 
the last time I talked to you was April yeah. of last year. And so that was before London. Yeah. So we talked about the anticipation and like that happened in a few of our interviews. We talked about mm-hmm. there's a lot of London fans that are waiting, a lot oh, yeah. of overseas fans mm-hmm. that are waiting. So it happened. Of course, we didn't get the result we wanted. But can you just tell me like your experience going there and just mm-hmm. seeing how crazy it really was? Because yeah. there are some <laughs> passionate fans. Like it was a Packers takeover there. Oh, yeah. No, it was uh, it was very impressive. And as you said, to be able to see it in person, I, I knew that we had great support. Um, of course. You no. Know, nationally and internationally but to see it in person uh and you know it's not like the giants are uh you know they're a pretty good brand yeah (laughs) have a great history uh, themselves but uh you know our we're very fortunate i think our ownership structure really lends itself to being being excited to support a team like us because sure it's community owned and you don't have a wealthy owner yeah and uh and, you know, we see that. I mean, I think uh, it was, well, and the other thing, there was obviously a lot of people from the United States traveled and yes. uh, to see them, uh, I, I, I estimated the crowd was about 80% Packer. It seemed that. Yeah, it was, it was pretty significant. Yeah. Um, in that way. But you can, you can see why it's such a high priority for the league, you know, the international exposure and the league's very aggressive uh, and has grown tremendously over the years, but. That's a that's a very fertile market that uh, you know can really make a big difference down yes. the road. And again, like we're talking about market, just like the NFL, just like there isn't one for football. Sure, but the Packers, like that, is already there, right? Yeah. Like that, you're talking about like eighty twenty. Like I just know personally, like there's so many fans that have been waiting years and years and yeah. years. They're like, when are the Packers coming? So when it comes to that, because it's not easy being like an overseas NFL fan. No. You know, if the Packers are on primetime, they're watching those games at two <laughs> o'clock in the morning. <laughs> like, either, that's, either staying up late or getting up early. Exactly. Yeah. Like that's that's a commitment, right? So what do the Packers like? How do you even begin just as like a brand, as an organization and a team? Like, how do you begin to like reach those fans? Because it's working. Whatever yeah. it is, it's working. Yeah. Do you think it's just that? Hey, like I identify with like the fando and like you're talking about just the ownership model, or is it something deeper that the team is doing that is reaching across an ocean to give that yeah, much passion? Um, well, a couple things. I think um, the Packers everywhere um, yeah. that you know, when we do pep rallies and Packers everywhere.com, it's a way for fans to connect not only with the team, but with each other. And I saw a lot of that uh, when we were in London um, and you know, the, the international growth, um, so the league calls it the international home market areas. And so teams can say, all right, we're going to, we want to have Scotland be an international area for, for the Packers. Um, about half of the, a little over half of the, the teams in the league have already adopted uh, countries. We've kind of taken a wait and see approach. Um, kind of see, you know, what, what works for some of the other teams. But they actually have staffing in in those countries. Oh, okay. And um, so I anticipate we in the next year or two we'll we'll do we'll do the same. Okay. No, that I didn't And know. you know, we've uh, yeah, you know that what well, you saw in London, I, I think Germany might be even a stronger base. Yes. Yeah. No, I know that. Yeah. yeah. No, they, like, even during thirty and thirty, like the amount of yeah. German fans that were just like in Denver. Yeah. And they were just like, yeah, we're Packers fans. Yeah. Like it, it, it's crazy. It was like, wow. Like there just has like so much of a reach. Yeah. And you're talking about, so like the Packers everywhere and it's again, the ownership model, all of these things. And you start talking about like social media, Mm -hmm. right. In an age where like you have social media accounts that are competing, like it's their Super Bowl, right? Like the schedule release is literally like their Super Bowl and because fans relate to that. Right. So you're like the chargers and you're like putting out stuff like that. Or, you know, you're the, titans and you're going out like on main street and just like asking people like sure. you know the busted up microphone you know yeah. their thoughts on teams and their naming logos how do you feel like as an organization because i feel like the packers are definitely more of like a traditional organization mm-hmm. in terms of like that you mentioned like packers everywhere and packers.com like there's great content on there so like how do like does the organization like view like social media as a tool to reach whether it's the uk fans or whether it's like the domestic fans 
to kind of just like continue either like that brand loyalty, like spreading it and just like continuing those generations of Packer fans. Well, we're paying <laughs> a lot of people for a lot of money for people to do things in that area. Which, by the way, like they're great, right? Yeah. Like or the social, I want to be very clear, like the social yeah. media team is great. And I think that's why it's like very frustrating when you have like organizations coming to be like, oh, they're ranked 32nd in the league. Because yeah. like we don't. Like, why, why is that? Like, why do, like, the outside perspective see that differently? Yeah. Like, um, you know, I think th- there's certain things that we just won't do. Uh, yeah. And, you know, that probably hurts us a little bit. Okay. But, uh, our focus is really on football yeah. and, you know, the true football fans. And, yeah, I know Duke Bobber particularly is, I mean, we're, you know, I, we're certain in terms of the number of you know, things we're doing in terms of social media – we're up there, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Some of the other teams are uh, willing to do things that probably we would look at and say, no, that's a little bit off brand. Or, sure. Yeah, it's not something that would make sense for us. Yeah. I mean, like, because it's even stuff, like, for example, and it's such a, I was explaining this to somebody who doesn't watch football, mm-hmm. right? So they're completely, they're not in this little world, yeah. right? No. So it's things like you go to practice, mm-hmm. right? And like you'll have fans who are like recording things and like putting it out there. And we're like, no, can't, we can't do that. Right. Yeah. Then you have the chiefs who are like live streaming their entire practice. Yeah. Right. It's just like, it's different. And I saw this in 30 and 30, every team is 32 businesses. Sure. Like they're mm-hmm. doing things very, very differently for regardless yeah. of like many reasons. But I think you also see like, there is just such a rabid, like we want content. I mean, part of the reason I have a living and a job is mm-hmm. because Packer fans are like, we just want more. Yeah. So like, where do you find the line is between like, Hey, you mentioned like family, like competitive advantage and all that. Yeah. Right. Where is the line of like, okay, we want to give something for fans <laughs> to be excited about. And like, Oh man, like, yeah. look, it's August it's preseason football. It's all this great stuff, but also like remaining to like where the brand is and everything. Like yeah. That. Well, and a lot of it is, um, you know, from a football perspective, not, Again, having information get out there sure. that might you know come back to hurt us at some point. Sure. So that's, um, you know, that's a, a little bit of a fine line. But I I think you're seeing more and more. Uh, yes. You know, and 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 you know that's kind of well. And you look at the league now. Um, in fact, you know, I don't know if you've seen quarterback. Uh, oh, I have. Yeah. I mean, that's really well done, and the, and the ratings for that are great. Are insane. Yeah. Yes. And uh, yeah, so we're looking at you know maybe doing something along those lines. Of course we did legacy and I think yep. that was well received. I agree. But I, you know, I think the game itself is obviously continues to be very popular. So along with that, people want, you know, they want to get inside the, the organization, you know, yeah. what, uh, what goes on in the locker room, what goes on in team meeting rooms. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, the- well, we've got our brand new facility and, you know, we want to open it up, let people see it, but, we also feel like there's some things that we're doing there that give us a competitive advantage and sure. we prefer not to but like and that's have the, other teams be aware of. Sure. <laughs> and that's the difference, right? Like you and I were just talking about this. Like I go to Dallas and they're like, Oh yeah, come in the draft room. And yeah. I was like, We're not supposed to be in here. Like yeah. there's like there's that like no, like we are this is not where we're supposed yeah. to be. Oh, there's a list of their top uh, <laughs> they, top prospects. They have a, a competition mm-hmm. that they have fans come into the draft room. On draft night, yeah, it's like a couple hours before the draft starts, yeah. And I was like, "What?" Like the, for me, like that's that's insane. Like yeah. that's that's craziness. Yeah. And you talk about kind of just giving fans more and giving them like the exclusive, yeah. like the behind the scenes. It, like that is just what exists out in the world. Mm-hmm. And because I think you see other teams do it, yeah. when your team's not doing it, they're just like, "Oh, but I want that," right? Yeah. Because Green Bay, like we practice here, mm-hmm. right? Like that that's what that is. So unless you're here in Green Bay coming to training camp or like, you're not going to know what it looks like, sure, right? Like yeah. you might see a couple clips or things like that, but you're not going to know. So there really is like this fervor and like desire for information. So I have to imagine like, it's a little difficult, like as an organization to be like, okay, like, but where, where do we, yeah, where, this? Do, like, where do we do this line? Because yeah. like, there's sometimes the social like does put out like a clip of like, you know, an amazing catch that's made at practice and things like that. Of course, like Evan's taking great pictures, yeah. but like there's that level. There's still a desire that's like, tenfold sure, yeah. and past that so like no a, yeah the desire for it seems to be insatiable for you know correct. nfl content and, uh i'm happy about that by the way because like <laughs> that helps me out sure <laughs> but 
It's yeah. always like it's interesting just to see like how different teams do it. Mm-hmm. And do you think like there are you, you mentioned like looking into some other things because mm-hmm. quarterback is like perfect for the casual fan, right? Yeah, because mm-hmm. if you because football is an investment of time. If mm-hmm. you're a viewer, you're yeah. not only investing in the team and the ups and downs of your team, but you are like, all right, like I'm committing three and a half hours to like if I'm just watching one game, three and a half hours to watch this. There's lots of commercials, uh, you know. Game's confusing at you times. You can get up during the commercials, Tom. You don't have to. I'm not, I'm not allowed to. I'm <laughs> streaming, so I'm not allowed to, Mark. We don't we don't get up for three and a half hours. But the point mm-hmm. I'm trying to make is that like quarterback reaches those like oh people know who casual Joe, fans. Yeah, yeah, Patrick Mahomes. Like oh, I can see the entire season play out. Yeah. Do you think the NFL people actually like Kirk Cousins now? That's what I hear. That's what... <laughs> Mark, I'm watching this. I was like, I know what you're trying to do. It's like <laughs> yeah. this is this is not gonna this is not gonna work. So at that point, like, I think the NFL is going that direction, right? Hard Knocks sure. has existed. I was going to say Hard Knocks. Well, of course, that's been, I don't know, 20 years. It's, yeah, it's been around for a bit, Yeah. right? And, like, again, like, every year it's like, okay, like, there's an excitement for it. And, like, waiting, of course, this year there's a little bit more excitement for it, but that's not over <laughs> there. <laughs> Another topic. <laughs> that's a different topic. But, but the point is that as the league and, like, other entities start to make more content about the behind the scenes, about that, do you see sure. the Packers also following in a similar vein while still keeping true to, like, the brand investment? Yeah, I think it's a balance, uh, balancing. But, yeah, I, I do see, you know, that we'll, I think we'll move a little more in that direction. But we're not, we'll never be the leader across the league. Yeah. No, there, <clears throat> there's a reason the Cowboys are number one in the league in revenue. I mean. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, yeah. I mean, and you, and you talk about <clears throat> like, of course they got a stadium that's rather large, and they sell yeah. a lot of <laughs> standing room only tickets. They do, yes, yeah. they one hundred percent do, and it's okay. We won a Super Bowl there, so <clears throat> very, very fond it, memories. It pans yeah. out. It pans yeah. out. Um, speaking of real quick, I do want to talk about this. So, of course, you had a busy off season. You know, just a little sure. some stuff going on. Uh-huh. That's fine. I didn't take a vacation either. It's all good. <laughs> so, what happened was is the first time I talked to you, like we sat down and had like a ninety minute interview, and we mm-hmm. went through your time with Washington and they're driving you around and hiding you from everybody and, and all sure, that. Yeah. But we also talked about like Brett Favre, mm-hmm. you're coming into this position and you're like, Oh yeah, we're trading a hall of fame QB. Cool. Yeah. Like that. Thanks everybody. Like this is great. Yeah. And now like this past off season, we did the same thing in terms of just for you, like that beginning experience. Sure. And now like this last experience, what kind of like lessons was it like, okay, we dealt with this, 20 years ago, or yeah. we didn't deal with this 20 years ago that kind of just like helped navigate through a, it's a complicated time. Yeah. No, you know, it is. It's, it's interesting. You said it, it it's really like history repeating itself. It's a book. Um, 15 years, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I think it, obviously there, there were differences, um, you know, cause Brett had retired, changed his mind. Yes. And, um, you know, Aaron was clear that he wanted to keep playing. Um, you know, I think, I you know, you did you did learn a lot. Uh, at least I did. It, it was so early in my tenure. It was like, yeah. yeah. And you realize that uh, when you're dealing with MVP, Super Bowl champion quarterbacks, you know, everything, anything that is said or done becomes a huge story. Um, and so, so you, we know. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, so I just you know, but uh, you know, and with Aaron. Yeah, obviously you want to be fair to him. I mean, he's accomplished so much. Um, but just like I think back then, um, we felt it was time to give Aaron his shot. Similarly, I think uh, thought no, number one, the time was right. Jordan was ready, and yeah. we needed to know is you know is he going to be the next you know hopefully <laughs> <laughs> exactly the Super Bowl champion of MVP uh, Hall of Fame quarterback. He's been on our side for the past like thirty years, so like it, it does work. And, uh, yeah, and, but with Aaron, um, I, you know, I think it, I'm really happy for him. I think obviously if you haven't watched hard knocks yet and I, he seems to be enjoying himself yeah. in New York and it's kind of a fresh start for him. And, um, you know, and I think Brian did a really good job in negotiating the trade terms. So, sure. that, um, you know, we'll, and, and, you know, we'll see, I think Jordan's ready and, uh, it's been exciting. You know, I think the team, uh, you know, and you know, I, not only the team, but I think I, I just sense a level of excitement that we haven't had in years. It's like you're reading my notes, Mark, because that <laughs> was going right into the next question. It's like yeah. there's a lot of Jordan Love jerseys around here. There's a lot of Christian Watson jerseys around yeah. here. And what strikes me is just like the youth of the team. This yeah. is a young football team, but it's it just feels different. Like walking yeah. around, like the level of excitement. Like Jordan's coming out for family night. 
to just cheers, yeah. right? There's like not, because there's a little like, okay, we've gone through like complicated transitions before, but like yeah. it's cheers, like it's excitement. Yeah. Every time there's a big play, act, like they're going wild. Yeah. And I think it's like, we don't know what we have, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's an empty box. You're like, well, I don't know what's in the box. It could be something really cool. Yeah. Like, we just don't know. And there's that level of excitement that quite honestly, like we haven't experienced for a really long time. Yeah. I mean, to be very honest, I mean, I was a Packers fan since I was six years old. Mm -hmm. This is only the third time in my life that I've been a Packers fan that there's going to be a new starting quarterback this September. Yeah. Like that's yeah. almost unheard of. Yeah. Right. And so to you have know how many that, quarterbacks, starting quarterbacks, the uh, Indianapolis Colts have had in the last seven years? Six, seven now? Seven, <laughs> seven, seven, seven now? and seven. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that should be a documentary. That, that's, that's the next one. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to go back into Well, apparently Philip Rivers was almost coming back for the Super Bowl last year. So, <laughs> you know, that would have been a different story. But in terms of the excitement that's going around camp, like what have you seen? Cause I've seen like, you know, you go to camp and things like that. Just like it, there's just seems to be an enthusiasm. That's just in like an electricity that's yeah. in the air. No, I saw it on family night and the joint practices, you know, here with the, uh, you know, with the Patriots. It was a little chippy. Packed. Yeah. It was a little chippy, a little but chippy, little chippy. Lot, and lot, uh, turns out fans like fights. <laughs> oh yes. No, they do. <laughs> yes. they It's kind of like wrestling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or ice hockey. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It just puts a little, well, cause I think, you know, there's also been those narratives about the Packers, right? Where you've had the Lions come out and say it, you had the Jets come out and say it, and mm. like they like drag them into water and you know all yeah. that. They're a finesse team and you know yeah. stuff like that. Like when you see kind of like those fight, like Elton Jenkins getting into fights, like in the Bengals, and yeah. you're not advocating and being like, yeah, just go no. out and punch people. But like there is that like, hey, like we're a young scrappy team, right? And yeah. just be like, we kind of need that fire, and I feel like you have <laughs> that because like. You have Jordan, you have AJ, you have Josiah, who are all drafted together, right? Like yeah. you have these guys who are coming in together, and they're young. We have one receiver who's you know twenty five; the rest are under the age of twenty five. <laughs> yeah, like this is a young, scrappy group. Like, how do you think, even just in terms of this season, like the identity? Is it all just like we're gonna wait and see, like what the identity of the twenty twenty three Packers is? I think that's part of the excitement. Yeah, I think um, I think you hit the head. That's the, the fans. The uncertainty uh, comes with excitement. I think the other thing I've noticed with our team, I think uh, they have a little bit of a chip on their shoulders in that, you know, we're picked to finish either last in the division or third, and nobody's given us a chance. I think they want to kind of stay under the radar but prove people wrong. Yeah. I mean, because there's lots of people who are writing them off because they don't, we don't have Aaron Rodgers anymore, right? Yeah. But then there's like, oh, no, there's talent on this football team, right? Yeah. There's a defense that we've been waiting to take the next step. There yeah. is that youth in which there is that unknown, but there's those flashes that we've just seen a little mm -hmm. bit. And it's like, this could be something here. Yeah. So, I mean, you had made comments before us and like, you need to wait half the season and you can't even put a time limit on it, right? Yeah. In terms of, and this might get a little deep. Okay. In terms yeah. of the brand of the Packers, for the past 30 years, the yeah. Packers have been known for a lot of things, but there's been two major consistence. It's Hall of Fame amazing quarterback play. Yeah. And it's winning a lot of football games, mm -hmm. right? Like those two things have brought a ton of success, not only to the organization, but to this city, right? Like yeah. guys like Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, like help get renovations built. Like they help get like these massive projects done because there's so much national attention. Sure. Yeah. And with the Patriots in town, like it just got me kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. They're going through this weird transitional phase too. Mm -hmm. And it's not just like they lost Tom Brady. It's like the brand is now different because the Patriots getting all these primetime games, right? Like they're getting, cause it's all about Tom Brady. They're in the playoffs sure. every single yeah. year. They're winning all this. It helps. I mean, they have a billionaire mm -hmm. owner, which definitely helps, but like yeah. all these renovations and stuff, they're getting, they're a nat, they were a national team. Yeah. And now it's like, well, like not down, down, but like interest is down. Mm -hmm. Like they're getting fewer, you know, national primetime games and all that mm -hmm. great stuff. Is there ever a thought with the brand of the Packers this past 30 years, they have those two things in common when it comes to making football decisions. Mm -hmm. Is there kind of like that also business side as well, where it's like, okay, like we mm -hmm. need to make sure, especially because it's this city. We just talked about how important the draft is, how yeah. every game is important to it. Is it of like, we need to have that reputation and keep up like that winning tradition, even mm -hmm. maybe more so than other teams because there's so much at stake. Yeah, I think it's really more, you know, the folk we put all the focus on winning and yeah. football. And when you do that, <laughs> if you have success in the field, we'll do well financially. Yeah. And uh, so I, I, I you know, I, I think it's really more driven by football than anything else. Um, you know, and I, I think 
I, yeah, I have to give you look at it's kind of unheard of right now across the league. You know, nor you draft a quarterback how you play him right away. So, and you look at what we did with Aaron yep. and what we did with Jordan. Yep. Um, I think gives them a chance to be successful. Correct. Yeah, because you you know you see it a lot. Talented young quarterback plays right away, Jordan loses confidence, um, and you know sometimes they never get it back. Yep. So. Um, you know, and there's an old saying in the NFL, the best time to draft a quarterback is when you don't need one. Correct. And I know Brian and I think Ted also <laughs> got a lot of criticism when they drafted yeah. quarterbacks in the first round. But, you know, certainly Aaron turned out to do well. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, we'll see the same from uh, from Jordan. Because I think what's really nice is, too, is like the team has also come to his defense in terms that of that has been great like yeah, that great. Yeah. he's like you don't need to be Aaron Rodgers yeah. just be Jordan Love and five years ago we sat it wasn't this particular meeting room five years ago we had this conversation it was mm-hmm. like one after the playoff losses it was like you know we rely a lot on Aaron Rodgers we yeah. rely a lot on the quarterback and we've been doing that for a very long time yeah and talking about maybe the identity going forward changes mm-hmm. maybe it is you know what maybe run the ball a little bit more or maybe sure. it is like a lockdown defense yeah do you see that as like a potential talking about the past 30 years? It's been dominated quarterback winning a yeah. lot of football games. <clears throat> we want to keep the winning football games thing. Maybe it is like for the near future, the identity of the Packers is a little bit different and not necessarily. It'd be great if it was too, but like <laughs> yeah. driven by the quarterback. Yeah. Um, I think particularly, um, you know, in here in Jordan's first year, yeah. um, you, you might see, and we've got a great running game. I mean, you know, with Aaron Jones and yep. AJ Dillon, um, and, you know, I mean, defensively, um, I think we, you know, we've got, I think, eight first-round draft picks. So we've got a lot of talent there. And, yeah. Um, I th- you know, so I think it's going to all come together. And we don't need Jordan to play at an MVP level. Oh. Uh, and, you know, I, I think particularly early, too, uh, you know, and I remember Aaron's first year. He played well, but, yeah, but it- I think we were 6-10. and 10 And, yeah. uh, you know, he had – there were some ups and downs. And that's to be expected. And I think – We'll see that with Jordan, but I, I'm pretty confident in you know the players that we have around him, both on offense and defense, that that we you know, that, that will play well. And I, I think they, and you mentioned it, <clears throat> it's been really encouraging to hear some of the comments from players that you know we've got Jordan's back. You know, we're gonna, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of noise out there, Mark. Like yeah. there's a lot of noise, right? Yeah. So when you have a team that can like kind of rally and be like, hey, no, like. We got our guy. Like, yeah. He's our guy. Yeah. Right. And it helps again. Like it was draft. It's a young team. It's that kind of the mentality. And if yeah. everyone's like, oh, well, they don't have Aaron Rodgers. They're going to be bad. It's like, all right, well, we'll just wait. Like yeah. we'll, we'll wait and see kind of like everybody else. Yeah. And I think that that excitement, you can feel that here. Yeah. Because like if it, if things turn out to be like even good this year, we're like, mm-hmm. okay, like that, that, that's where, yeah. like, that's where we're going to be. And then next off season, there's like some, those are big decisions that hopefully have Two first round picks, right? <laughs> two first round picks, sixty five percent. You have two first round picks, and then it's like, okay, we'll have more money. You know, like we'll kind of be in like a different position. And sure, yeah, yeah, it's exciting times here in Green Bay. No, it's uh, yeah. It, I mean, and obviously, phenomenal run that Aaron had, and it's pretty extraordinary to play eighteen years for one team, and, yeah. and then still play. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. And like and as you said, like he'll be back. You know what I mean? Like he'll be yeah. back. And bring yeah. out, like whole line, whole line thing. Similar, the same thing with Favre. We yeah, knew, yeah, exactly. You know, the, the, although I, I tell you, I uh, make the way home when he went to the Vikings, he ended up going to the Vikings, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'll never forget uh, when he ran out on the field in a Viking uniform. Oh, I know, first game here. Oh, I know, <laughs> that was. It was a little, it was tough to swallow. Yeah, now, he went to the Jets, and like I live in New York, so like I had to see that, and I was like. Ugh, okay, I had to see it again too. So I'm like, yeah. all right, whatever. It is what it is. When he went to the Vikings, I was like, yeah, no, this is no. this is different. I mean, if Aaron ends up going to the Vikings, that's Mark, like we, we talk about history repeating ourselves. Like let's <laughs> let's avoid that one. Let's avoid that one. Yeah. Um, I wanted to wrap up real quick. Sure. And it's so I'm staying at a, a local house. Like I'm staying at one of the Airbnbs. I never pull my phone during an interview, but uh, this is hanging in the bathroom okay. of the Airbnb, all and right. I think it just like is Green Bay. Yeah. So it's an article written from 1956. Okay. Okay. Wow. And like, it's a whole big article, whatever. Mm-hmm. But at the very end, it says, over a period of 30 odd years, the Packers have demonstrated that a team from a comparatively small city can compete with the big cities of the nation with the fanatic support of loyal fans. After overcoming all the difficulties that have come their way, it is now a certainty that there will always be a Green Bay Packers in Major League Football. 
the next 30 years of the Green Bay Packers. Mm -hmm. We've talked about how it's been quarterbacks, it's been winning mm -hmm. football games, and we hope to just continue that tradition and yeah. do that. But I just want to thank you because mm -hmm. we've talked about Bob Harlan on this show. We've mm -hmm. talked about people who have supported, you know, all of this. Mm -hmm. But like during your tenure as like, you know, as we're getting there and you got the draft, like sure. yeah. that has continued, right? And so like, yeah. thank you for that because that's been amazing. But the next like 30 years of Packers football, if you're looking ahead, right, we're looking past just this yeah. season, what do you see for the brand of the Green Bay Packers? Is it just continuing to adapt and win football games? And like, how could you see it potentially transform? You no, know, it's a very big question. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, from a league perspective, gosh, we've got long-term collective bargaining agreement, long-term TV deals. So I think the league is going to continue to be very strong. Uh, the national revenue, which is crucial for a smaller market like us. Um, yeah, I, I, th I feel very good about it. Now, 30 years is way out there. It's a long I mean, time. I, I can go five to ten. Yeah, we're we be very good. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's just that it, this is a special place. And uh, I, 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 it's, we're going to continue to be very competitive. Um, I think, you know, I don't know if you've seen the new facility we have. I think that's, that sets us up for the next 10 to 15 years. Um, there's some things there that I think give us competitive advantages over other teams. Um, and you know the the organization is is really set up to win. I mean that's that's our main purpose and goal. And uh, we don't have an owner who's looking to make a profit or yeah. sell a team for six point oh five billion. <laughs> so I, I'm 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 very confident we'll continue to be uh, not only competitive but you know one of the best franchises in the league. Mark, as always, I appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Thanks for all this. Uh, and as always, Go Pack Go!